Hello, human geographers. We are back at it again this evening. Tonight, we're going to examine the theories and critiques of Thomas Malthus. So let's begin with who was Thomas Malthus? He was one of the first to argue that the world's rate of population increase was far outrunning the development of food production. Thomas Malthus was a British economist who was alive during the Industrial Revolution. As we've already examined, we know that the Industrial Revolution began in Britain and propelled Britain from stage one into stage two of the demographic transition, when death rates drop, life expectancies increased, and the population growth soared. Well, Malthus noticed this, and in 1798 published a work titled An Essay on the Principle of Population. In that essay, he argued that population grows geometrically or exponentially, as you'll sometimes see it. That is, two people leads to four people, then eight, then 16, then 32, and so on. He also argued that food production could only be increased arithmetically, that is, at a constant rate. So from two, it becomes three, three becomes four, on to five, and so on and so on. Malthus believed that population growth would exceed the food supply, leading to some kind of check, as he called it, on the population. These checks would be things that brought population back into balance with the food supply. So disease, famine, starvation, and war would be the outcomes of overpopulation, leading to a population crash. And this cycle would repeat itself over and over again. And while the constant cycle of death and misery that Malthus predicted hasn't come to pass, at least not at a global scale, it does not guarantee that it will not happen in the future. The 1950s saw a reawakening of Malthusian thought in response to the rapidly growing world population, particularly in developing countries. These were the Neo or New Malthusians. The Neo Malthusians believed that the global population is exceeding its carrying capacity. But in addition to being concerned about food, they're also concerned about scarcity of other resources, such as water, arable land, non-renewable energy resources, and climate change. A prominent Neo-Malthusian is Paul Ehrlich, who wrote The Population Bomb in 1968. He argued that hundreds of millions of people were going to starve to death. Keep in mind the context of these claims. We had just hit 3 billion people in 1960. And when the book was published in 1968, we were over halfway to our fourth billion person on the planet. Now, this graphic also shows projections. For example, we actually hit 7 billion in 2011, and we will have 8 billion people on the planet in 2022. So we're growing faster than this graphic predicted. There are several pieces to address here. Again, the claims of hundreds of millions starving to death has not happened. But there have been millions who have died of famine, most notably the Great Chinese Famine from 1959 to 1961, when upwards of 30 million Chinese starved to death. However, it should be noted that the blame for those deaths is placed on the policies of the Chinese government rather than overpopulation. 
But the reality is that developing countries are experiencing rapid natural increase for a longer period of time. So population growth may bring increasingly unsustainable consumption of resources. New technologies and practices have placed a serious strain on resources such as water and fertile soil. So future scarcity could lead to conflict as Malthus predicted. And levels of prosperity are rising around the world. More people are consuming more resources. For example, Americans account for less than 5% of the global population but account for 25% of the natural resources that are consumed each year. And as more people in developing countries achieve greater levels of prosperity, consumption could increase dramatically. As a result, Neo-Malthusians have been strong proponents for strict family planning programs and birth control policies, known as antinatalist policies, that we'll examine in a future lecture. But there have been many critiques of Malthus over the years. So we're going to address several of those points. As Malthus was concerned with two factors, food and population, both could have potentially proven his theory incorrect. For example, population has not grown geometrically as he predicted. Rural to urban migration driven by job opportunities in urban factories, led families to have fewer children, which ultimately led to a slowdown of the natural increase rate. We know that this is called stages three, four, and five of the demographic transition. But it's worth remembering that Malthus was living in the first country to go through that transition and thus doesn't have the hindsight that we have now in the 21st century. Family planning and the increased use of contraception has meant that women have greater control over the number of children that they have. As a result, the global total fertility rate has been cut in half. It's expected that the global population will peak sometime in the late 21st century and then actually begin to decline. But in the short term, global population is expected to increase by 85 million people per year for the next several decades. The other factor that Malthus focused on was food. Since Malthus's time, global population has doubled three times. But during that same time, food production has doubled five times. Food production increased through several different methods. Mechanization of agriculture greatly increased production and improved efficiency. In addition, new technologies like high yield varieties of seeds, chemical fertilizers, and improvements in storage and refrigeration increased production and cut losses, meaning more food overall. And it's important to note that countries no longer must grow all the food that they need to feed their population. In this age of interconnected globalization, countries increasingly grow food for global markets that can be generally sold for lower prices. Those who disagree with the Malthusian view of population and resources are called cornucopians or anti-Malthusians. One very prominent critic of Malthus was Esther Bosrup, a Danish economist, who argued that the threat of starvation would motivate people to develop new practices that would produce more food. New inventions would emerge and more productive methods would be utilized. Bosrup believed that land could be used more intensively, shortening fallow periods, using more fertilizers and pesticides, and planting high yield varieties of seeds so that an acre of arable land produced more food than it did previously. Remember that Malthus believed that population would grow geometrically while food would grow arithmetically, 
Eventually, the population would exceed the carrying capacity, which would lead to a Malthusian catastrophe like famine, disease, or war, and the population would be brought back beneath the carrying capacity. Bozrup, on the other hand, argues that the food supply would stay a few steps ahead of population growth through intensification and innovation. This is a good example of possibilism. And as we can see, that's exactly what has happened. Global grain production has outpaced population growth. In fact, the world is currently producing enough food to feed more than 10 billion people. Another prominent cornucopian was Julian Simon, who argued that people are the ultimate resource and that population growth was a positive thing because it would lead to more brain power to solve the world's problems. There are a lot of competing ideas in this lecture. We're going to continue to examine these different points of view when we come back to class. Have a good evening, everyone.